participate in this time of remembrance as we lead up to Easter. You can also use whatever you have at home to serve as the elements, or you can stop by the church office to pick up pre-prepared communion elements as well. We look forward to worshiping you with you at this time. The next night, we will have a Good Friday service at 7 p.m. on Friday, April 2nd. We want to encourage you to attend in person or online at lafayettefirst.life slash watch as we contemplate what Jesus did at the cross. Join us as we sing and read scripture that celebrates the cross. And don't forget that Easter is on April 4th. That morning, we'll have two services, one at 9 and one at 11 a.m., Invite your neighbors and friends to join us as we worship our risen Savior. We have yard signs available in the lobby to help advertise. Pick up one as you leave. Finally, were you aware that our church has a podcast? The PATH podcast has new episodes available each Monday on Apple, Google, and Spotify. Just search for the PATH Podcast FBC, all one word. You can also view a video version on the church YouTube page each Thursday. It is a great way to keep your thoughts on Jesus throughout the week. We are so glad that you are here today. Take a moment to pray and get ready to meet with God as we worship together. to our feet this morning. We're here to worship the creator of the universe. It's the one who's coming on the clouds. We get to bow before him and worship. Let's sing together. He's coming on the clouds. Kings and kingdoms will bow down. And every chain will break. His broken hearts declare his praise. Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Our God is the Lion, the Lion of Judah. He's roaring with power and fighting our battles. And every knee will bow before Him. Our God is the Lamb, the Lamb that was slain for the sins of the world. His blood breaks the chains. Every knee will bow before the Lion and the Lamb. Oh, every knee will bow before the Lion and the Lamb. Oh, so open up the gates. Let's sing it out. So open up the gates. Make way before the King of Kings. The God who comes to save is here to set the captives free. For who can stop the Lord Almighty? Our God is the Lion, the Lion of Judah. He's roaring with power and fighting our battles. And every knee will bow before Him. Our God is the Lamb. Slain for the sins of the world, his blood breaks the chains, and every knee will bow before the lion and the lamb. Oh, every knee will bow before the lion and the lamb. Oh, no one can stop our God. Let's sing this out. Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord Almighty? 
Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord? Our God is the Lion, the Lion of Judah. He's roaring with power and fighting our battles. And every knee will bow before Him. Our God is the Lamb, the Lamb that was slain. The sins of the world, his blood breaks the chains, and every knee will bow before the lion and the lamb. Oh, every knee will bow before the lion and the lamb. Oh, every knee will bow before the lion and the lamb. the lion and the lamb. Amen. He became sin who knew no sin that we might become his righteousness. Let's sing this together. He became sin who knew no sin that we might become his righteousness. He humbled himself and carried the cross. Love so amazing. Love so amazing. Jesus Messiah. Name above all.
Lord today, right? Amen. Well, listen, you guys go ahead and have a seat. I want to welcome you here. If you are a guest today, welcome. We are so glad that you're here. We would love to be able to get some information to you. So if you are a guest, you can fill out a connection card. There's some out in the lobby on your way out, or if you'd rather do that digitally, you can text the word guest to 423-455-9458. You can do that right now if you'd want to. Take your phone out and do that, and that'll just start the process of you filling out um, some information so that we can get some more information back to you. But we're so glad that you're here today, and welcome. We have a great opportunity this morning to celebrate new life. Who likes doing that? Anyway, okay, it took you guys a second, but I'm glad that you like to celebrate new life. We get to celebrate baptism this morning, so direct your attention to the screens as we hear Hattie's story. Hi, my name is Hattie Grace. And I'm six and a half, and I go to North Lafayette Elementary. My story is that I that last Wednesday, my mom turned on a song about being a good Christian, and I asked my mom what a Christian meant, and we like talked about it until we got to Wendy's. And then at Wendy's, I asked my mom if I could do it. So then we pulled over somewhere. And then we said a prayer. And then I asked Jesus into my heart. I would like to thank my mom and my dad, my grandparents, Miss Clay, and Miss Foster. And Reagan and Davison Hayes. And What a blessing, amen. What an exciting time to celebrate the new life that Christ imparts to you and has imparted to Hattie. If you're a family member or a friend and you'd like to, uh, we want to celebrate with you. Would you just stand so we can celebrate what Christ has done in Hattie's life? Would you stand? We just want to celebrate together. Hattie is coming, and she has a really neat thing. Uh, if you don't know this, uh, Miss Nancy Devord has done an awesome job helping us get these little awesome vials. And uh, Hattie's dad, Dusty, was baptized recently, or uh, in the past uh, uh, few years, and has his here. And so she's going to empty that into her baptism water and then take some as well. So would you do that now, Hattie? All right. Let's put that over here. Hattie, have you trusted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Yes. I baptize you now, my sister, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let's continue worshiping our Lord at this time. Stand to our feet. We get to celebrate new life today, and it, it's such an exciting thing to me to be able to experience that with Hattie and with her family, um, because it's a reminder to us, not that we should be surprised by this, but God is at work around us, and we can celebrate that and relish in that today. And so let's continue to worship through song. 
We have a God who blesses us in more ways than we possibly could imagine. So let's sing this together. Come thou fount of every blessing, turn my heart to sing thy grace. Streams of mercy never ceasing, call for songs of loudest praise. Teach me some melodious sonnet, sung by flaming tongues above. Praise the mount I'm fixed upon it, mount of thy redeeming love. We were lost apart from Christ, but he came and found us. I was lost in utter darkness till you came and rescued me. I was bound by all my sin. God, you are so good to us. We do see how you bless us in so many incredible ways. And Father, I pray that today you would remind us that you do it because you love us and because you are good. Speak to us now as we open your word. We love you, Father. and pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. You guys can be seated. If I'm out of breath, I ran. But I did get my socks on, so that was good. <laughs> if you were to do a Google search, can we, just, can we just be excited that God is moving in our midst? He's moving and working. I've had other conversations of little 
boys and girls asking the same questions and nearly in the same spot. And so I'm so thankful our God still works and moves in the lives and hearts of people to change them, aren't you? If you were to do a Google search on the sense of belonging, uh, a good amount of information can be found, and it would likely support what you probably already know. And that is that we really desire and long for belonging. I would even say that sense of belonging is related to a lot of the issues that our world is facing right now. People wondering about acceptance and belonging and do I fit, do I matter, and some of those things. And I think it's a core issue at people's heart and soul. Now, we, we can just be honest and say oftentimes people try to find their belonging in the wrong places, but it is at the core of us all. We want to fit in. We want to belong. We want to be a part of something and be accepted and loved. Would you agree with that? I mean, just a simple nodding of your head, if you could, and if you say no, okay, we can have a discussion afterwards. I, I just, I, I, think, I, I think that is the case. I think that is true. It's certainly on um, something you learn in psychology is one of the, the hierarchy of needs that Maslow spoke of. It, it is something that people long for, a sense of belonging. Middle school was weird for me. Anybody else? Yeah, of course, you don't have to. Thank you. Okay, good. Um, because I think it really stems back to the fact that I wanted to belong. And I was trying to figure out who I am and where I belonged, right? And so that led to some poor decisions. That led to some uh, kind of dumb things that middle schoolers do. But it, but it was weird, and that's because we're looking for who do I belong with? Who do I connect to? Who is in my group? Or who will accept me into theirs? It's something we all deal with, this idea of what is my identity? Where do I belong? But, but it doesn't just end in middle school. It continues on as we move jobs or we move to new locations. We are trying to find friend groups, people that will accept us, people that will love us, people that will receive us, aren't we? We're trying to find belonging. I think we all have that sense inside of us. We want to be a part of something. We want to be accepted. We want to be loved. We're all searching for family, if you will. And, and I say that in, in quotations, Mark. We're, we're, we're finding, trying to find that place where we fit and we feel like family with people. And, and that's important because not everyone finds family in their actual family, do they? Family can be messy, difficult, because it's dealing with people, and people make things messy and difficult. But we're looking for family in a bigger sense. Uh, family can be deeper than blood, can't it? And we found that. We know that. There's nothing new to us. We know that we have found family in places that wasn't blood-related. We found family with others that weren't even our true family. We found more family sometimes in those places. And one of those places can be in church. And ultimately, when we find family, that place where we fit, it's like our puzzle piece with all its jagged edges and rounded corners just fits snugly into that family, that place where we belong it's like a sense of freedom. Wow. I'm finally here. I'm finally where I need to be. These are my people. These are my friends. This is my family. Now, you wouldn't be surprised to understand and to know that the Bible addresses this sense of belonging, this desire for each and every one of us to understand that we 
are meant to be a part of something bigger than us, something into which we fit. The Bible addresses that. But we know that because if we are Christians, if you're here today and you've known Christ for any time in your life, you know that the Bible addresses anything and everything that we could face. It is sufficient. It is truth. And we find in it the answers to our lives. And the Bible addresses this. It addresses this in Paul's letter to the Galatians. And he's using this core thought, this core structure of, of people's lives, this desire to have belonging, he uses that to help them to see what they're missing out on by trying to find it somewhere else. Paul is addressing this idea of family, this idea of fitting with your people and being free in that. Because you see what happened in this church, much like any other church, is that God brings people into it from every walk of life and places them into this family. He places them into this place that they belong, this place that they are connected to, when otherwise they may have never found them. People, uh, God takes people from... Every walk of life, every nationality, every skin tone. He takes people from all over the world and brings them into the family of God. And particularly, he brings them into that context in a local sense, that local context of family. And so you and I, as a part of this body, as a part of this congregation, and, and, and many of you have been here all your life, but this is your family. This is your place. These are your people. This is where you belong. And be, many people are watching today or maybe even in this room, and they're looking for that. And I would tell you, we would love for you to be a part of our family, just as Hattie joined it last, uh, um, a week ago. You can as well. And find this sense of belonging Look at what Galatians 4, verses 8 through 31 say, and, and we'll see in this idea of the sense of belonging. But in the past, since you didn't know, you were enslaved to things by the nature that are not God's. But, not, but now, since you know God, or rather have become known by God, how can you turn back again to the weak and worthless elements? Do you want to be enslaved to them all over again? So what Paul is saying is that you came from every walk of life, and you were living your life for you, and you didn't know God, you didn't even know about Him, but He came and found you and knew you. You came to know Him, and He brought you into this family. That's what Paul is saying here. You are observing special days, months, seasons, and years. He's speaking to what they had gotten uh, duped into by these Judaizers. I'm fearful for you, he says, that perhaps my labor for you has been wasted. I beg you, brothers and sisters, see family again, become like me, for I also became like you. You have not wronged me. You know that I previously preached the gospel to you because of a weakness of the flesh. You did not despise or reject me, though my physical condition was a trial for you. On the contrary, you received me as an angel of God and Christ Jesus himself. Where then is your blessing? For I testify to you that if possible, you would have torn out your eyes and given to them to me. So then, have I become your enemy because I told you the truth? They court you eagerly, speaking of the Judaizers, but not for good. They want to exclude you from me so that you would pursue them. But it is always good to be pursued in a good manner and not just when I am with you. My children, I am again suffering labor pains for you until Christ is formed in you. I would like to be with you right now and change my tone of voice because I don't know what to do about you. Tell me, you who would want to be under the law, don't you hear the law? For it is written that Abraham had two sons, one by a slave and the other by a free woman. But the one by the slave was born as a result of the flesh, while the one by the free woman was born through promise. 
These things are being taken figuratively for the woman represent for the women represent two covenants. One is from Mount Sinai and bears children into slavery. That is Hagar. Now Hagar represents Mount Sinai in Arabia and corresponds to the present Jerusalem for she is in slavery with her children. But the Jerusalem above is free and she is our mother. Speaking of Sarah. For it is written, Rejoice, childless woman, unable to give birth, burst into song and shout, You who are not in labor, for the children of the desolate woman will be many more numerous than those of the woman who has a husband. Now you too, brothers and sisters, like Isaac, are children of promise. But just as then the child born as the result of the flesh persecuted the one born as the result of the Spirit, so also now. But what does the scripture say? Drive out the slave and her son, for the son of the slave will never be a co-heir with the son of the free woman. Therefore, brothers and sisters, we are not children of a slave, but of the free woman. What does all that mean? I want to help you to see this idea that Paul is helping them to see this sense of belonging that they found. In fact, Paul is pleading with them, pleading with them. I beg you, brothers and sisters, he says. And Paul, please, uh, Paul's please begin by reminding the Galatians what they were like before, before they entered this new family of faith, this new place of true belonging, this new place of freedom. R- remember what you were like before, he says. Look, in the past, you were living according to your own desires, onto your own ideas, and you did not know God Almighty, but you came to know God. You came to know your Father. You came to know Christ. And basically, he's pleading with him, why would you want to leave that, is basically what he's saying. And I want to remind us for just a moment, what were we like before we knew Christ? Who were you before then? And how often does that side tempt you away? Come over here again. Come back to what you once were. That's what they were being enticed unto. uh, To be enslaved, to be in uh, in slavery to to their own selves. It was just a new way of doing that. Paul's reminding them, you entered a new family. You have a new family. Uh, Father, you have a new, new brothers and sisters, and you, he even mentions you welcome to be in with, with open arms, even though I had a physical ailment, even though there was difficulty, likely with his eyes, because he mentions you tore out, you'd even tear out your eyes and give them to me if you could. And he basically is saying, what happened to that? And that may be easy for you to look at Paul uh, and what he's saying, look at the Galatians. How could they do that? But if we're honest with ourselves for just a moment, we'll realize I'm quick to do that as well. There's so many times that I'd really just rely, rather rely on myself and I forget the new family that I belong to. I forget my new father and what he wants for me and I try to live like I once did. Maybe that's just me. Maybe that's not you. Maybe you're holier than me. But the the thing is that we constantly have to turn our attention toward God. Paul's also reminding them that the sovereign God sought them out. Look what he says. He says, But now, verse 9, but now since you know God, or rather have become known by God, how can you turn back again to the weak and worthless elements? And what we see there is that God came to find them. He came to seek them out. He came and chose them to be a part of his family and took them out of the slavery. We talked about that last week as Christ came down and dove in and rescued us from every prison we put ourselves in chains to. That's what God did. And God did that for you. God is a God of promise, a God of love, and a God of rescue. Why would we go back to where we were before God came in and sought us out. In fact, it is God who births people into his family. 
It's God who births us into his family. You see, it's just like real birth. There's nothing you or I could do for it ourselves. Number one, we are, uh, our brain isn't fully developed yet. We, we can't decide, well, I think I'm coming out today, right? And the same, the, the same truth is there that God initiated our birth into this new family. He brought us in. He rescued us out of what we were once living in and gave us freedom and family and belonging. Paul uses the imagery of birth because that's how we initially enter our families, our birth families. But this is, however, a spiritual birth. And you can experience this birth today by coming to God in faith. That's what Paul's been building this this um, defense all along in the previous chapters, previous verses we looked at. You can't come in by your own strength, but you can come in by believing in the strength of the God who saves. Don't depend upon your weak and worthless elements that you once did. Depend on God and God alone because God bought you and brought you into his family and gave you every blessing you could ever want because you believed. And friends, today, may we believe in Christ. May we have faith in Him. And if we haven't already entered into His family through faith by the birthing of God, may that happen today. Paul mentions labor twice further using the imagery of birth uh, or labor pains, he even says. Paul uses this imagery to help us see this idea of family and how it happens. Verse 11 and verse 19, he talks about the labor he has, and he's afraid it's going to be wasted, or he's, he says, my labor pains have, have begun again until you are formed in Christ. In verse 19, Paul is hearkening to true birth or Physical birth, I should say. But he's also hearkening to how much he cared and felt responsibility for their spiritual formation. Paul cared deeply. Paul had moved on. Paul had come, planted this church, built up the leadership, and moved on where God led him next. It would have been very easy for him to say, well, I did everything that I can do. Only God can change their hearts now. No, Paul took it upon himself to write a letter to them, pleading with them, saying, I wish I could be with you so you could hear the love and care in my voice. And Paul cared deeply about this group of people. Paul cared about their spiritual formation. He said, I beg you, brothers and sisters. And what we see is that we see as members of God's family, we are responsible for one another's spiritual formation. We are responsible for each other. Now, as a pastor, I commiserate with Paul. I feel this weight. I feel this weight of, of responsibility for your spiritual formation. That's part of my job. That's part of the, 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 the burden, if you will, of being your pastor, of being a shepherd. But that's not something I meant to carry all on myself. That's something we're supposed to lock arms with. We've talked a lot about in the past weeks the importance of community and Christian community together, and we are responsible for each other and our spiritual formation. We should understand our need for belonging and the fact that we found it and the fact that we can share it with others. You can find family here. You can find love here. You can find peace here. You can find Jesus here. And we should share that amongst ourselves, and we should go to the highways and byways and tell people, you can find life, you can find fulfillment, you can find hope in the family of God, and it is available to you by faith 
in the promise of Jesus Christ. And so that ought to be on every one of our hearts. That ought, be, that ought to be on every one of our lips as we go to work, as we go to the grocery store, as we walk the streets, as we go wherever we go, we ought to have that message of freedom and belonging found in Christ and being a part of God's family. Easter is coming up. It'll be here really quick. Yeah, and we're still in a pandemic, but God is, uh, things are happening, and many of you have gotten your vaccines, and I I'm, I'm, I'm know you're excited. I can see it on your faces. And so more people are going to feel more comfortable coming, but they won't come unless you invite them. We can put signs out on, in front of our yards, and that's great. We can put uh, ads on the radio, on the internet. We can put a, something on our marquee out there, and that's great. We'll do all those things. But did you know the difference between uh, a growing church and a dying church comes down to one word? Invite. You should care so much about people's souls. You should care so much about people's destinies that you should invite them to come and experience what it's like to be a member of the, a family of faith. Literally, they've done research and it shows that the churches that are growing are the churches that the members are inviting people to come and see. We've given you an opportunity to do that today. In your pew, you'll see a, a little card. It says one on it. And it gives you three people to engage with this week. One person, one neighbor, and um, one friend, I think. And one of those is to invite someone to be here for church. And my encouragement to you, invite them to be here on Easter Sunday. We've got two services, so we can be socially distanced and receive everyone uh, during that and we're going to have overflow rooms as well take that card pray about who God has for you to invite my encouragement is for you to do it Paul then turns to Abraham as he did earlier in the chapter and in chapter 3 as well and he writes of ch uh, Abraham's two children and equates them to how people seek belonging in God's family. One was born because Abraham took things into his own hands. Sarah came to Abraham and said, hey, you want a kids? You want to fulfill God's promise that your offspring will be more numerous than the sand, more numerous than the stars? Well, it ain't happened, and I'm 90 years old. You're 100 years old. We got to do something about it, right? And so Hagar comes into the scene, and that's who Paul is mentioning, this woman who was in slavery, who was a, enslaved to Abraham. And, and so Sarah said, hey, take my handmaiden, take Hagar, and that's how we'll fulfill God's promise. And it doesn't work that way. And that's what Paul is helping, them, helping the Galatians to see is that, look, you can take things into your own hands all you want, but it's not equal to what God can do and what God would, will do. And what did God do? He kept his promise. And through that line, through the line of Isaac, Jesus came to give us freedom and to make us his children of promise. And the one born of promise led to freedom because as God's children, we receive freedom. We talked about that last week. Our inheritance is freedom. Our inheritance through faith is freedom in Christ. And what did Paul say? You and I are children of Abraham and Sarah, we are children of promise. That's what he was pleading with the Galatians. And that's what I want to plead with you today about. We are children of promise. Freedom comes from trusting in the promise of Christ. It's not for clamoring with our own hands, by our own mentality, by our own ideas. It's, it's not clamoring to accomplish things in our own strength, in our own wisdom, but it's fully trusting in what Christ has done and saying, I couldn't be free except for Christ has declared me free. He has made me free in His sight. We learned last week that Christ gives us His clothes so that when God looks at us, 
He sees Jesus. He sees sons and daughters. He sees heirs. If you think about it, Paul's imagery really is echoed in what we experience here today when we adopt a child, when someone adopts a child. Think about it. A child born to a family that for whatever reason couldn't keep them with them. And a family comes in, receives that child, and makes them their own. Friends, that's what Paul is saying here, is that you once belonged to a place you didn't belong. But Jesus came in. God came in as a loving father. He brought you into his family. And he made you a child of his. Co-heirs. Do you, do you understand that? Some days I do, some days I don't. It's hard to understand, but I am a recipient of all the blessings that are afforded to Jesus. I am an heir of God the Father. And if you know Christ, you are too. Don't you want to live in that truth? Don't you want to bask in the faithful love of your loving Father who didn't have to love you? He didn't have to rescue you out of that. He didn't have to send His Son. He didn't have to die on the cross for you. He didn't have to give you that. He could have left you right where you were. But He didn't. And so shouldn't we bask in that freedom? Shouldn't we live in that freedom? Shouldn't we walk in that freedom? Shouldn't we walk every day that I am a child of God? I am cleansed by God. I am rescued by God. And I am his child. I am his son. I am his daughter. And he loves me as much as he loves Jesus. And I am the recipient of all his blessings. Shouldn't we walk out of here? Shouldn't we go get up in the morning, tomorrow morning, and shouldn't we just bound out of bed and say, I'm a child of God. I'm free in Christ. Jesus saved me. And so we got to wake up every day and not say, what can I do today in my own strength? No, no. We wake up tomorrow morning and we say, Thank you, Jesus. I didn't deserve it. I didn't earn it. But you see me as your child, and I am free. Help me to live in that today. Help me bask in that today. Help me walk in that today. If you're here today and you want to trust Jesus Christ, you want to become a child of promise? Paul reminded the Galatians, and I remind you, it's easy. It's easy to do because it's something you can't do. You've got to fully trust in God. And I don't mean it's easy like you just you know, say a magical prayer and that's you know, it's going to happen. No, what I mean is that come to the end of yourself, realize you can't do it on your own, and say... I want what Christ only can give me. And God, will you give it to me? I don't deserve it, but will you give it? And I can lead you in a prayer right now. I can tell you the words to say, but man, if you don't mean it with your heart, it'd be, it'd be pointless. And so that's you. If you're watching, if you're in this room and you want to trust Jesus Christ as your Savior, do it, friend. It's worth it. It's freeing. It's like you that puzzle piece. Man, it's great. But I can't do it for you. And so I encourage you to cry out to him today. I can help you. If you want to trust Christ today, I'll walk with you. You can come up front. I'll pray with you. I'll, I'll show you how to do it. If you 
online with us, you want to do that, you text the word ALIVE to 423-455-9458, and it'll come right to me, and I'll walk with you this week. I'll help you do it. But you got to do it, not me. And for the rest of us, just as the Galatians, we're children of promise. You and I, if we know Jesus Christ is our Savior, we are children of the promise, and so we are free. So this week, let's live in it. Let's walk in that freedom. Maybe you just need to come today. This altar is open. You can pray. I'd love to pray with you. I'd love to walk with you any way that I can to help you to walk in that freedom. But you got to make the decision to do that. My encouragement is to do it. We're going to pray, we're going to sing, and if God is working in your life, and God's moving in your heart today, you follow him. Jesus, we love you. We are thankful these truths are amazing, God. These truths that Paul lays out. May we not be like the Galatians wanting to go back to living in the work, weak and worthless elements of this world and of our own wisdom and best ideas. May we live in you. May we live in freedom as children of promise. God, I pray that you would breathe freedom into somebody's life today, watching online here in this room, that you would give them life. Help us, God, because we can't do it on our own. We need you. And help us to respond in this moment. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Would you stand? And as you stand, we're going to sing. And if God is moving in your heart and moving in your life, you come. I'd love to share with you and walk with you. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Melt me, mold me, 
May that be the prayer of our hearts every day as we wake up. God, fall afresh on me today. Mold me, fill me, use me today. Let that be your prayer this week. As we exit, I would encourage you to continue to worship through giving. There's a spot to do that here in the room at the doors, or you can text Lafayette First to 73256. If you're joining us online, you can go to our website, lafayettefirst.life slash give, and give that way. Uh, on your way out of the room, I'd encourage you, if you didn't get an Easter yard sign on your way out last week, we have some more here in the lobby. Also, if you ordered one of our new church t uh, long sleeve t-shirts or sweatshirts that might be in the church office so if you go down this hallway here it's the last door on the right um, but I encourage you to stop by there and see if yours came in we're they're coming in in waves so if it's not here this week it might be here next week we never know um, but make sure you go by and check if you ordered one go this week be a blessing to those who are around you and to those you come into contact with and I hope you have a great week you are dismissed